Fifty years ago, a doctor named Seuss and a cat in the hat were changing the way our kids learn to read. Fifty years ago, the Cold War was in full swing. And fifty years ago, a small group of engineers in a place called Kearney Mesa were trying to figure out ways to take us to the stars. The first launch initially was a real elation. We weren't sure it was going to work, and it did. It was the Atlas. The Atlas was designed as a, uh, a weapon system. A weapon system so big, it was compared to the atomic bomb's Manhattan Project. I'm Dick Martin. Uh, I'm a rocket scientist uh, on Atlas for 57 years. My name is Dan Heald. I'm uh, some kind of an engineer. Some people say rocket scientist. That's, that's a bit too fancy. I'm Bill Ketchum. They call me the rocket man. We workers were doing something new. Whatever training we had in college didn't really apply. The first test launch of the Atlas was in June of 1957, so we're really celebrating the 50th anniversary of that launch. Most of the dynamics engineers around me were working, for, well, they're all working on airplanes. Several of them said, oh, uh, you ought to get off this program. It's just a uh, Buck Rogers comic strip uh, fantasy. There were no textbooks, there were no cookbooks, there were no real specifications. They were being developed as we went. Every day was a new challenge and I went to work wanting to go to work. That was great. What, what excitement were we going to run into today? Named after the mighty giant of Greek mythology who holds the world on his shoulders, the Atlas flew straight for 24 seconds. That causes quite a celebration in my mind. The Atlas, uh, after uh, a number of seconds, went out of control because of a, um, a fire in the, um, the base section of the Atlas. And it went through all sorts of uh, flight contortions and the tank never broke up. Basically, the propulsion and the structure worked beautifully and I thought it was wonderful. It was very controversial because the skin was only half the thickness of a dime, similar to an aluminum can. A beer can, of course, uh, isn't pressurized unless you shake it, <laughs> but uh, it's the same type of construction. It doesn't have any internal uh, structure as, as this does. People wondered, is that really gonna hold up? But it sure has for 592 flights. The Atlas program was launched by General Dynamics, but it was the threat of the Cold War that fueled its development. We were competing against the Russians in the uh, what was called the Cold War, which could have become very hot, especially uh, after the Cuban Missile Crisis. The reason for the program uh, was that the Russians were doing the same thing. Yeah, I was kind of shocked when the Russians put up a Sputnik The Atlas program was a national priority and the Air Force wanted a dedicated facility uh, separate from anything else to develop the Atlas. So that's how the Kearney Mesa plant came into being in 1958. From when I started there were about 20 engineers working on the program and within a few years it grew to 31,000. The facility covered hundreds of acres and housed thousands of employees at the height of its operation. I like to say that this kind of turned San Diego into a city. Just east of Kearney Mesa, Atlas rockets were tested at Sycamore Canyon. In the early days there could be as many as uh, every other test could have a problem. But that quickly uh, developed into uh, a success. But it wasn't easy. There were many obstacles to overcome. One problem was being so close to the ocean. An Atlas engineer was uh, tasked to write a specification for a material to displace water from the surface of our skins. If the moisture from the salt air in San Diego or the launch site in Florida got into the welds, it would create corrosion, which would be catastrophic. The Rocket Chemical Corporation from San Diego came up with the solution. Their engineers worked on the formula, and after 40 attempts, they got it right. It's known as water displacement formula number 40, otherwise known to most of us 
as WD-40. Finally, on December 17, 1957, they were able to celebrate the first completely successful launch. Go, honey, keep going, baby. One year later, a mission was launched to surprise the world. It would be the first time there was communication between Earth and outer space. Now that the Atlas rockets were launching successfully, the next goal was to put a man in space. One important historical significance of the Atlas is the launching of the first American into orbit. John Glenn was launched by an Atlas uh, rocket on February 20th, 1962. Good Lord, ride all the way. Godspeed, John Glenn. Well, the Atlas was the only launch vehicle large enough to carry a man into orbit. I remember in uh, probably around 1959, all the Mercury astronauts came out to the Kearney Mesa plant. When the astronauts had been shown the Atlas they were gonna ride on, one of the questions asked, directed to um, John Glenn, uh, do you have any special words for us? And he said, just do good work. And amazingly, that was picked up as a motto. The Atlas provided assured access to space and paved the way for the Gemini and Apollo missions, which led to landing on the moon. The great British explorer George Mallory, who was to die on Mount Everest, was asked why did he want to climb it. He said because it is there. Well, space is there, and we're going to climb it. Well, the Atlas is the beginning of, and maybe the first step in, more planetary exploration and more technical knowledge of the universe as well as commercial enterprises. I find it remarkable that the Atlas program was started out as a weapons program pointed at the Russians and today the Atlas flies with a Russian engine. I really have to say that I was born at the right time and uh, at the right place in history. It was a wonderful work lifetime. It, it was a learning experience with a, a wonderful group of people. If I were to say something to the, uh, the founders of the Atlas program, I would say, great job guys. You created something that has stood the test of time and thanks for giving me a great opportunity to work in the space industry. It's very seldom that um, you can say that your life's work is exactly what you would have wanted to do. Most of us are thinking about another 50 years, but maybe that's a bit optimistic. Lockheed Martin and the United Launch Alliance are still building and launching Atlas V today.